Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next installment of our special Cybar chat series focused on privacy. In our previous chats, we discussed privacy regulations and how to add privacy into your risk assessment. Today, we delve even deeper into industry-specific privacy, and we're joined by Swathi West, healthcare and pr privacy manager here at BAR, to explain how privacy differs in various industries. So Swathi, welcome. Let's get started. Why do different industries have different privacy regulations and requirements? And why is this necessary when we already have broader compliance regulations like the CCPA and GDPR? Great question, Claire. I think, you know, people have gotten familiar with some of the biggest privacy regulations, like you mentioned, can be the GDPR, the CCPA, and we we even discussed these um, in deep in the last uh, previous chats. In recent years, you know, when you think about GDPR or a CCPA, uh, people just, you know, just think about Facebook or social media companies, because you always see that in the news. But However, these frameworks are not just applicable to social media companies or, um, you know, or Facebook, if you will. They apply to data agencies or even third-party data suppliers. Today, we've seen several data agencies collect and sell millions of our, our data, personal data, and even their consumer data every day. So it is important to keep in mind that these laws are applicable to industries based on the type of data and the amount of data that organizations may collect, process, or store. So, you know, back to your question on why different industries have to abide by different privacy regulations and why not use the broad compliance frameworks, which are already out there, like, you know, CCPA or GDPR goes back to the type of business you're in and the type of data the organization is collecting, whether it might be, you know, personally identifiable information to your name, email, SSN, or a protected health information, anything to do with your medical records and even financial information, uh, right, your tax um, information and things like that. It, it even goes back to, you know, we always talk about the data, but I think the biggest thing with privacy to think about, it, it also goes back to the geographical locations because these laws are, um, you know, depending on the country, for example, United States, depending on the type of data you're collecting or even depending on the state you're residing on, for example, California in this case, you have to comply with CCPA. And, and depending on the industry or the organization you're in, um, for example, FERPA, right, the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act for Educational Institutions and Gramm-Leach-Blaley um, Act for GLBA. So it depends on the data. It goes back to the data side and also where you're residing. And if you consider European Union, you know, which includes the Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, all the, um, every, er, you know, everything that's in that European Union, you have to comply with GDPR. And we have the new Brussels General, uh, I mean, it's not new anymore, but um, the Brussels General Data Protection Law, LDPA, that, that's in effect from 2018. Um, and you have, um, if you are collecting Australian residence information, you have um, Australia's privacy principle, APP. And then there's one for Canada now, you know, the list goes on for China, Japan, and India. So unfortunately, complying with the privacy can't be like a one size fits all. It is very important to understand that the type of privacy regulation that is best suited for your industry, for that specific industry you're in, or even the type of business you're in. So, um, you know, again, to address your question, we can't just use the GDPR or CCPA. We just need something more specific that addresses the type of business you're in and also the location you're in. Got it. Thank you for such a comprehensive answer. So you already started to mention this a little bit, but which industries have the strictest data privacy compliance regulations? Good question. Um, I can't, I mean, we can, you know, we can go back to the stats and data for this one, right? It depends on how expensive the type of data is. And uh, we know from the data breaches that we're seeing lately, the biggest thing is healthcare, right? So the top three, at least from what we're seeing today um, in the world would be healthcare, finance, and even education. Um, so for example, healthcare, right? Um, you can imagine like healthcare companies have a lot of sensitive data, not only they have personal identifiable information, 
uh, with your SSNs or um, you know names and addresses, but they also have patient records. So you know they have a lot of protected health information and insurance information. So any organization with protected health information is required to comply with the federal um, HIPAA, and then you know which is again Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. They have you know security and privacy. We'll we'll delve a little deep um, in our future chats, but I would say healthcare is really important, and they have to uh, comply with um, HIPAA Privacy Act. And same thing with finance. Uh, you know, there's so much data out there, and if you if you look at the stats uh, recently, financial institutions and financial services have seen you know seen an increase in the reported breaches over the past few years. You know, it goes back to how freely or how available our financial information is. I mean, everyone uses, um, or most people uses TurboTax for finance uh, taxes, right? So, you know, things like that are never before our financial information is readily available out in the world. So to protect the consumer's financial data in 1999, you know, US federal government imposed uh, Graham Leach Bailey Act. And this requires financial institutions, companies that offer consumers financial products or services like loans or um, investment advice or insurance to explain their information sharing practices to their customers um, so in order to safeguard the sensitive data, right? And the financial regulatory agencies have to establish appropriate administrative, technical, and physical safeguards in, in, or, in order to keep this, uh, keep this sensitive uh, data more secure and be compliant with GLBA, the organizations also need to inform their customers how they share their sensitive data and also let customers know that they have the right to opt out of sharing their data with third parties. You know, we've seen this um, choice to opt out in all the privacy acts, and that's the big part. So these, you know, financial organizations have to provide that opt out option and you know, let the customers know that they're sharing their data with the third parties. And you know, that's why this organizations have to have specific security plans in place if you're in the financial industries. And um, you know, I touched a little bit about this educational education as well as the biggest industry, you know, have uh, regulations to it because especially in the US or you know, I'm, I'm from India. So even in India, you know, if you go to high school or college you'll be aware that, you know, we're all aware that educational institutions have so much personal information about a student. So keeping in this, uh, this in mind, U.S. federal government enacted a law specific to educational institutions called the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And, you know, this protects the student's educational records. And it applies to federally funded institutions. And like I said, this helps to keep their protect the student records and gives the parents and you know or eligible students more control over their educational records and um, rather than you know disclosing it publicly it's very protected so i would say that's another industry that is highly regulated um, just to keep in mind that although not in these specific industries, companies collect a lot of data, like data marketing agencies. So all these agencies, we've discussed uh, data agencies or anything that you do research and analytics lately. So they all should be aware of how these regulations apply specific to them. So yeah, th th these would be the top three that I can think of. Awesome. Thank you for that. I really appreciate you delving into all of those specific industries. I want to touch on a little bit more of the last thing you just said. Um, so we've discussed those three specific industries, but what about companies adjacent to those industries? How do they determine whether those regulations might apply to them or not? The best way I would say, you know, companies to determine those regulations, whether they, you know, apply to them or not would be the data. I know I'm, I'm probably repeating myself. Like, I just understand what kind of data you have. For example, even if they're not directly involved in the healthcare industry, right? But they might process or store or transmit protected health information. Uh, they they may need to comply with HIPAA. You know, there's always this covered entity business associate that we talk about. You know, you're getting data from somewhere else, but you know, are you signing in the BAAs or are you? Do you have that requirement to keep the data that you're getting? secure. So things like that, asking those questions, um, important questions is very important to make sure you comply with them, even though you think you're not, you might. 
So, you know, for that reason, I would suggest partner with a privacy law expert or uh, consult with your own legal counsel to get answers for all these questions. And also uh, even partner with um, someone know, who knows what the regulations are that out there um, so they can help you understand what regulations apply directly to your organization also goes back to the type of data you store. Great, thank you. I really like that you, uh, you know, gave that advice on partnering with an expert. So my last question for you today is what other advice do you have for businesses as they navigate industry specific regulations? A great question, Claire, you know, goes, goes back to asking the right questions, right? Like I said, in the last, um, last answer, you, ha you should be able to asking the right question. So uh, that's very important. And I always start you know, just give a fun little answer for my clients because it's just, it's big. I mean, I don't know everything about their business, but because you're, you're in the business, you're doing those business. So I always say, go back to asking the right questions on five W's and how. So I always say that because, you know, to start with, you have to understand who you are. So it can be the type of business you're in, the industry you're in, and, uh, you know, just understanding the customers you have, right? So definitely ask, who are we? Like, what do we do? Right. And um, the next question would be whose personal information you're collecting. Um, so, for example, it, it can be your your own employees. Right. Or it can be the students, the patients, or it can also be your consumers, your customers. So what you know, whose information you're collecting today, that that's very important to understand. Um, further what industries, uh, what regulations help you. And the next question would be, why are you even collecting this? You know, this can be for like a like I mentioned, maybe for analytics purpose, or this is for your third party data agency. You're selling this data, or um, you know, even um, you're collecting for some regulatory purposes or some legal reasons. You have to collect a certain type of data. Um, so that's very important to understand why you're collecting. And the fourth question is, where are you collecting the data? Right. So we've seen um, you know all these the Facebook and social media going back to the first question. It can go back to the geographical location. It can go back to the state. It can go back to a certain country. So where are you headquartered and are you collecting personal information of U.S. residents or U.K. or Brazil, India, Japan? I mean, we'll talk about some laws that govern the specific countries, too. So it's always important to ask, where are you collecting the data? And the fourth important question is, how long are you storing this information? This can go back to your um, data retention requirements specific to your product or application, or even legal purposes, right? Uh, it can be, for example, HIPAA, you might have to store certain data for seven years. So things like that, understanding how long you have to store a type of information that you're collecting is very important. And after you answer all the questions about, and then the biggest question to ask is what type of industry specific regulations I need to be aware of. But to get to that, what type, um, you should be able to understand you know, your industry you're in, the type of data you're collecting, why you're collecting, and where you're collecting, where you're storing, and how long you're storing that information for. So addressing those questions will you get to what type of industry specific is required for you. And I know I gave um, a fun answer. I know asking the right questions is not always just gives you the ultimate answer on what type of industry specific regulations that requires to you. Um, I would say, you know, more generic answer would be definitely, you know, work with your legal counsel or trusted partners like Bar, so we can help you navigate through these ever-growing um, state, federal, country. I mean, industry-specific regulations, right? Every every state is um, will be having a privacy law pretty soon in the next couple of years. So, uh, we we definitely have a head start on this one. So definitely, you know, work with um, a trusted partner like Bar to so we can help you answer these questions. Great, thank you so much, Swathi. I really appreciated that five W's and how answer. Love being able to simplify the process. Um, that was my last question. So thank you, Swathi, for all of your insight. And we look forward to seeing everyone next time on Cybar Chats. Thank you.